Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is episode 7 of your Seattle Kraken franchise mode. As today, well, we're finally back ladies and gents. We are finally back. And before we get into the video, if you are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button and also hit that like button. It will be very, very appreciated as we finally have the return of the Seattle Kraken franchise mode, which I am so excited. This has been it's my daily life to practically make a franchise mode video and upload it to you guys. It is it, it is basically my life to do this. I absolutely love making YouTube videos. I absolutely love doing it. And now we're back at her again, which I'm super excited. Now we're going to be taking ahead of the trade deadline. We have a lot of players that we're going to be targeting for, um, like Johnny Goudreau, like maybe a Sammy Vatten and Cam Fowler. There's a lot of big name players that are out there for this year for the Seattle Kraken. Now, we somehow miraculously made a comeback. We really started off the year rough. It was looking like we were going to be drafting high again. But now we're second in the division, almost first place right behind the Edmonton Oilers. So we're in a really good spot right now. Our goals for is absolutely amazing. Our goals against is awesome as well. I mean, it could use some improvements, which we are definitely going to be taking upon ourselves to improve that a bit. Also, our power play, pretty damn good as well. And our PK is one of the best in the league. So there, there is still a lot of big issues with this game. And it's nowhere near perfect. The trade values are definitely still broken in this game. And I'll show you guys by a lot of the trade values. But we're going to we're gonna tough through it. We're going to try to make the most realistic trades that we could possibly make with each and every team that we do deals with. That we make sure that they come out on the good end. And we do as well. So this is what we got so far. And so far we're not looking too bad. But there is one thing that I do want to improve upon, and that's a little bit of goal scoring. Cam Atkinson, the guy that we picked up in the expansion draft, 32 years old. He's really not going to be the future of the Seattle Kraken, nor do I want him really playing on that first line. He's a guy that I do love, but we need somebody to fit up on top of that first line, which initially I thought of Johnny Goudreau. Johnny Goudreau, who plays on the Nashville Predators right now, got traded there last year. Um, he has been struggling over the past little bit. Might be a perfect guy to fit up on that top line. You do Voinov on the right wing, which is what you would do, and then you would have... Um, uh, Goudreau play the left wing. You have Goudreau, Strom, and Voinov, which I think would actually be a very scary line. Also, another thing that we are missing is the physicality, right? That was the biggest thing that we were talking about is that we are definitely missing a little bit of physicality and picking up Johnny Goudreau really doesn't help that. But I think the way that we're going to carry this team is we're going to have some physical guys, yes, but I want to make this team as a new generational team, something that we have not built before. It, 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 and it contains just a bunch of speed, right? Our defense core is going to be the ones that are going to be the shutdown. Uh, we have Colton Paraka, we have Gunnarsson improving, we already have a lot of big defensemen, a lot of physical defensemen as well, which I am really excited about this team. So we're going to make some uh, some trades to really help bolster this uh, this team up. Now I do want to make a move before trade deadline because I really don't want to lose this one single player, and that is Johnny Goudreau. We're going to be making a move for him because I really want to bolster this team up for this year and for the future to come. Johnny Goudreau, he's 28 years old. We can pick him up and we can sign him up to a big time deal. He's not going to probably ask for too, too much. He's not been the biggest point. I mean, this year he's been actually almost point per game, but last year he was struggling. I think this year we could continue that success with Johnny Goudreau and maybe have a great playoff run. So who are we going to trade to the Nashville Predators who are kind of a rebuilding team right now? Who are we going to trade them? First of all, um, Cam Atkinson, uh, actually Cam Atkinson really doesn't work for them. They don't want Cammy. We might trade Cam Atkinson for the defenseman and uh, whoever we trade for for a defenseman. Josh so saying, I was thinking maybe he would be a good idea, but he's playing really good on that third line. Um, even though he might jump up into the top six and he's going to demand a lot of money. Um, maybe make that a move. Actually... We could because Na St. Louis, the team that we are thinking about doing a deal with for Mr. Sammy Vatanen, we are thinking about picking up maybe a left winger to pick up for the team for just a year, like a David Perron. Could play defense, could play on the PK. Um, 79, wow, he has 73 points last year. Big time point producer. What do we have down on that third line just in general? Because I know it's definitely not the most defensive line in the world. We have Jake for 10, who actually is a right-handed guy. So we could throw him over there and then just do, yeah, Perron, Sorelli, Hosang, or um, Bertanen. I think that might be a lot better because I know Hosang's not as well defensively 
and picking up Perron will help us out defensively. Plus, we're getting rid of a younger player in Jaws Hosang and a good move to pick up Johnny Goudreau, who will bring in some goal scoring. David Perron, who fits on the first line. I don't know how well he'll fit on the third line, but I guess we'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it do, uh, how they do. Oh, also the Ottawa Senators, they have their new logo. That's cool. That is really cool. I love that new logo for the uh, the uh, Nashville Predators. So Johnny Goudreau, um, well, that's the guy who we're going to be picking up. I think that's the biggest move that we're going to make. Johnny Goudreau, uh, we're going to be trading away Josh Hosang. Um, Josh Hosang has been doing incredibly this year, and I think he could continue that success there in Nashville. Um, Hosang, and then I do want to trade away Janssen because he's been struggling here um, for the Seattle Kraken and then we can give them a couple of picks um, Let's see. I feel like I'm gonna rip them. Actually. We do have a goalie that we can give away. Can we? We have UC Soros and Philip Gustin. I know they probably have oh, yeah We have two goalies right Thatcher Demko and UC Soros who uh, I think we're gonna keep the tandem for this year and then we'll kind of look back at it next year and we'll see how well, but I think Gustin for right now, I think he'll do better on a better team than playing with us. And it's a really old goaltending duo between Lundqvist and Smith. So they could use a bit of a, a younger goalie um, to come into that system. So we'll give him Gustin as well. We give them three good players. And Hosang, who is, a, he's absolutely playing off the wall this year for the Seattle Kraken. Um, then you got Janssen, then you got Gustin. And then we'll give you guys a third and a fourth and uh we'll pick up back up some picks for next year we'll take a fifth and a sixth so will that go through it yes it does and that trade felt too easy but that's okay oh my camera died i'll be right back guys all righty i am back so the seattle kraken has just made the biggest move in franchise history as we have officially picked up johnny goudreau uh, from the Nashville Predators making probably one of the biggest deals ever and probably one of the biggest steals picking up Johnny Goudreau. Uh, we still have one more trade to do though. Do not worry. Oh my god, is that going to be a plus? Oh, never mind. If we threw up Gurionov, so Cam Atkinson makes it a plus, which I mean, that's not that's not terribly bad. I want to see if we can maybe... Oh. Oh. Maybe, maybe we keep Cam Atkinson. I mean, it's definitely not the most physical line in the world between Goudreau, Strom, and Atkinson. It would be a line that would get their shit kicked in. But for this playoff run, you keep Cam Atkinson this year. You wait until some maybe some bigger, heavier guys come through the system. Or maybe you wait until some of these guys start developing. But you make a really strong third line that could bash some bodies between Sanford, Sorelli, Vertanen. And then even a nice, strong second line with Voinov. And yeah, I like that combination. Now we got to do one last deal uh, before we kind of finish everything off, um, which we're going to be simulating up the trade deadline because I would like to get a little bit of trade deadline done and uh, have a little bit of fun with that in today's video because, you know, it's the new mini game. Can't can't just keep doing trades outside of trade deadline as UC Saros is injured with an injured back. We did. St <laughs> we did. We just traded away uh, Philip Govson, so we're going to have to use Decord, which is okay. I mean, it's only going to be for a couple of games anyways. But hopefully Johnny Goudreau does good in a new uniform here for the Seattle Crack, and I'm hoping he likes it here. Um, we should get him to a new extension too is what I'm thinking as well for uh, for this video before we head it right into the... Oh, my God. See, this is what I also hate is that this bullshit right here. Like... If it's not if it's not gonna be a long injury, why the fuck do I need to call up anyone? UC Saros could just sit on the bench, and if he needs to play, he could just go out there and play, or we could just call out the emergency backup. But no, you gotta do a bunch of these time. You gotta edit your roster. You gotta do this and that and all this. Oh, it's a pain in the ass, EA. But you know what? I'm going to have fun with the Seattle crack in franchise mode, at least. That's going to be the best thing about it, that I get this back and going. So, Johnny Goudreau. I really want Johnny Goudreau to at least get 30 goals. Oh, yeah. First point already. In a first game in, first point as a Seattle crack. And hopefully, we will uh, continue bringing in the W's here for the Seattle crack. And we are going to be a buyer. That's for damn sure. And into the trade deadline. Yes. Yes, siri, Bob. So there's some big names like we were already looking at Suter. Um, definitely not the biggest names in the world. That's for damn sure. No one that's really a, a big time power forward that I'm really going to be looking at. Um, 
We're going to be looking at defensemen now. There's Hampus Lindholm. Wow. Um, one year left at a $5.2 million deal. Uh, Hampus Lindholm would be hella nice to bring into the team. Um, but I was I was looking at Sammy Vatanen was my guy that I was looking at um, to be bringing into the team. Because, I mean, you look at everyone here. Uh, who did uh, New York just picked up? Um in exchange for Jason Zucker's off the board. We got Josh Manson too, but we got Gunnarsson developing. Hampus Lindholm, we could pick him up and then think about what we want to do, I guess. We could do that. It is with a divisional rival, of course. That's going to be the issue. But Hampus Lindholm is really, really good at defense. And, and that's a big thing, right? We want to build that defense core up to be a very strong defense core. And without good Brady Shays doing good this year offensively, I, I don't think... Picking up an offensive defenseman to play alongside of Brady Shea is really that sort of an idea to do. You pick up Hampus Lindholm to throw alongside of him. I think that that might be the game plan. I think that might be the game plan. Because Troy Stetcher, I love Troy Stetcher, but he's definitely not the guy that I would rely on to be that guy to play alongside of him. So let's make the deal. Let's make the deal and do that. So I want to kind of keep the defense core the same. Um... Really don't got anyone to trade away from our defense core, and not like they're gonna really want anyone from our our core there. They want a lot of the younger players. Um, Jorgen Johans. Oh wait, Gunnarsson. No, 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 no. We're not trading away Gunnarsson for Raquel and Shannon Kirk. You shitting on me? You gotta be on something, man. You gotta be on the highest level of crack ever. How the? Yeah, see, this is still the thing that's still broken about EA Brandon Peary being this high up with only thirty nine points. EA, you got to fix this. This is definitely the biggest thing that is the uh, really breaks this game and breaks the trades in this game and why teams are so, I don't know, so fucked up because, my lord, Lindholm we want. Um, we might just trade him a first-round draft pick because if Hampus Lindholm is going to be a future of our defense score, I feel. How old is he? 28 years old. He's the same age as Johnny Goudreau. I think he could potentially be the future of this team. I'm willing to trade away a first-round draft pick. For Hampus Lindholm. I don't want to trade away any of our big prospects right now because I do like Jorgen Johansson and I do like Jujitatile. I do like those two guys. We'll trade away some of our uh, those prospects there. I think a first and Hammies for Lindholm will work. Yep, that's perfect. Hampus Lindholm, welcome to the Seattle Kraken. Um, that's a big deal there. So that practically solidifies our defense group because I do want to keep Shillington alongside of Paraco. They've been great all year long and I want to continue that. Um, yeah. I'm done doing trades. I don't want to do any more. Uh, I think Hampus Lindholm is going to be perfect on the team um, and make us more of a defensively solid team here in Seattle. So hopefully that deal uh, will pan out for us. And uh, it, it, you take a look at Hampus Lindholm's defensive stats. I mean, they're nuts. Hampus Lindholm is a crazy good defender, and I'm really excited to have him play alongside of Brady Shea if my game doesn't break. Jesus, EA. <laughs> You're getting me a little scared there, man. Really scared. I thought the game was going to freeze. So um, let's take a look at the team now. We got to figure out what we got to do for lineup combinations now. We, we got to kind of change up the entire mold of the team. So Hampus Lindholm, we want you to play there alongside of Brady Shea. Um, now we don't get a plus one from it. Um, and that's just going to be how it's going to be because of our coach that we got. Definitely not the, the best coach. He probably more of a defensive offensive um, kind of guy, but anyways, I like the defensive core that we have, even if we're not getting any big pluses. But I do want Johnny Goudreau up on that top, um, that top pairing there. That's what I really want. Even though he's not a right-handed shot, which is kind of my problem. Or do we just go full out, full out forwards, and take Shillington off of it, and then we just put another forward here, right? Majapani. Um, we put another forward here, not Sanford, because he's already playing. Sorelli we could put there. Bertanen. Bertanen. Perfectly. So we get a big 3+. plus. We just put all our strongest forwards. We'll see how well that does. If we start losing games, we'll change it up. Uh, we need to get Goudreau out here. Not Manjapani. I love Manjapani, but we need to get Goudreau in here instead. Get him up on that top power play. And we also need that power forward and Mikhail Voinov. Um, we need him playing up on that top. To really give it that big boost. Gurionov and Voinov, Bubalev, Sanford, Shane Atkinson, sure, Sorelli Roslovich. Yeah, the these will actually we want Lindholm to play on the PK now too, because he is gonna be a really, really strong defender for us, and I'm gonna really be excited about having 
Lindholm on this PK now. It's just going to make us more of a lethal team. The way that this this team is looking out for the Seattle Kraken, not very many pluses, uh, especially for the defensive core. You're not going to really see that very much, and uh, that's going to be evident um, just because of the coach that we have right now with Eddie Reeves. But I do like Eddie Reeves. He's gotten our team to a winning record. So let's get off. Uh, let's, yeah, let's finish off the rest of the season, and then we'll take a look at the team and see how we're doing. And then, yeah, defense, that's his weakest point for Eddie Reeves is the defensive game. But, I mean, he's been doing well ever since we picked him up as a coach. So, I want to keep relying on Eddie Reeves. And uh, maybe we'll change up coaches later on once he starts struggling. But right now, I do like the way that Eddie Reeves coaches this team. And we're pretty successful so far. So, let's let's see how way, the way that we end the season off. Um, we're 2-1 and one with uh, Troy Stetcher. Do I want to put him in the lineup or not? Um, we could put him alongside of Pissick. We could do Stetcher and... Pissick, I'm thinking. Will that be a good pair? Eh, not bad. Setcher does way better up on that that second pairing, though. That's okay, though. We'll continue to play as we lost to Dallas. Another injury there. You see Saros out of the lineup. Joey Decord will call you back up. So I, I do like the moves that we did, though, and especially for the future of this team. Like, you're going to have Goudreau for a couple years. You're going to have Lindholm for a couple years. You definitely know that once. Of course. Hey, guys. Um, to say the least, I'm having a pretty fucking awful day today um as today i was gonna upload the seattle kraken video it was gonna go up with no hicks it looked like it was gonna go good i recorded the video yesterday edited last night when i was really tired but i got it done and it looked really good i rendered it out while i was sleeping i woke up and i was like okay sweet i'm gonna throw it up and um upload it it uploaded pretty quickly which i thought was a little bit weird but i'm like okay it's not really that weird because sometimes the videos do upload pretty quickly and next thing you know it i look at the time and it only said 60 minutes and i was like the fuck the video is supposed to be 30 minutes long and then i took a look at the video and it was 30 minutes long but i was never able to get past 1627 and i don't know why and you're probably asking me oh why well, you still probably had the files why don't you re-edit it i can't i deleted the files because i was doing some editing in class and uh i ended up deleting those files to make some room for um, those of course so uh, big bummer big time bummer but it is something that we're going to have to deal with so the Seattle Kraken uh, we'll take a look at an overview of the year off kind of like talk about what we did uh, the Seattle Kraken ended the year off with a 47 34 and one record placing that top of the Pacific Division making absolute history uh, Ryan Strom had a great year with 83 points was just absolutely lethal Gurionov did slow down near the end of the year but he still had 22 goals which is just an insane year for Gurionov hopefully he will keep on improving uh, as the next big thing and same with Johnny Goudreau we picked him up um, and he just had a great season with the Seattle Crack and nine goals 13 assists he was an absolute lethal stud really excited to have him um, playing for the team for the next couple of years as we did give him a contract extension I will show you guys that later uh, Cam Atkinson also had a great year Mikhail Voinov great rookie year I think he led all rookies in goal scoring Brock didn't do too bad. Not too much of an improvement. A little bit of an improvement, but not too much. Um, Morris this year, this year, as he played alongside of Mikhail Voinov and Gary Yanov. Uh, Sanford as well did really good. Brady Shea had a great year with 50 points. Sorelli, Magipani, Roslovich. Um, defensively, uh, Shea, Paraco, Lindholm. Also another guy that you guys seen that we picked up. Uh, also, I wanted to leave you guys a question on who we should start between UC Saros and Thatcher Demko. Either one. Um, as UC Saros was struggling near the end there with a 907 295. Thatcher Demko is a real solid goaltender with a 910 281. So both goalies are looking really, really solid for the team right now. League leaders in points, uh, goalies, of course, Carter Hart, uh, rookie skaters, Mikhail Voinov leading the league in points for rookies, which is just absolutely crazy. Mikhail Voinov was just insane. Uh, Ford say again with 114, and then uh, we had uh, Shrom there, and then Gurionov was close. He was up in the almost the top five for goal scoring. Actually, he is. He's tied for uh, fourth in goal scoring. He had 42 this year, just absolute crazy season from Gurionov. And I'm really excited to see how well he'll do against the Arizona Coyotes. Um, but before we get into that, I'd just like to talk about some quick contract extensions that we got down to doing. Uh, of course, we got Goudreau 
on a $8.6 million deal for the next eight years on a no-trade clause. We also, of course, you guys know about Colton Paraco, but Lindholm already had a contract extension for the next little bit. So we have mostly everyone locked up on some decent deals for the next little bit. Um, just some players that we're going to have to worry about, like Strom, like Bubilev, and like Guryanov here in the next little bit. So those are something that we're going we're gonna to have to look out for, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to clear up cap space, of course, and be able to afford those guys uh, and, and fit them on the right spots for this team. Um, next thing you know it, uh, we made it in the playoffs, won the, the top of the division, and now we're going to be going up against the Alexander Ovechkin Arizona Coyotes. Uh, I never thought I was going to say that, but I, I have to now say that officially, that this team officially has Ovi, Keller, Castle, who's aging, but a really defensive team between Hyman, Barrett, Hayton. Like, they got a lot of good defensive forwards that might be able to shut down our young offense. But I think we'll be able to power through their defense back here is a little bit weak really physical if you kind of take a look at the physical abitude so that's going to be something that we're going to have to be wary of but i think we can definitely take advantage of it with our speed and then darcy kemper and aiden hill uh, as our goaltending so not too bad of a team there for the arizona coyotes um sorry guys that for some reason the video glitched out um i'll show you guys the rest of the month and how we did as well before we kind of end things off um big wins against the Edmonton Oilers this is what really made us win this division uh, and montreal as well but we were losing and winning some games near the end of the, the season there but you could see that we're a pretty dominant team we definitely did struggle near the end there with a five and five record but i believe in the seattle kraken and having a good uh run against the arizona coyotes now let me guys know in the comment section below whether you guys want to see uc stars or thatcher demko in the net you guys can leave that down in the comment section below sorry guys for fucking up on this upload um it's on me so i'm gonna end the video here thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys all in the next video Adios, amigos.